Welcome to the Startup of the Year podcast, where each episode we showcase exciting new companies from around the world. This podcast is produced by Established, creators of the Startup of the Year program. Established is focused on helping organizations with their innovation, startup, and communication strategies. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Start of Your Podcast. I'm Frank Gruber, the co-founder and co-CEO of Established, co-founder of Established Ventures, and the team behind the Startup of the Year community and this very podcast. Thank you for being here. In this episode, you're going to hear a conversation from Rich Malloy uh, that Rich Malloy actually had with Mert Asari at our ninth annual Start of the Year Summit, presented by ReliaQuest, hosted by Embark Collective and powered by Established. Mert is from Math Venture Partners, and he talks about how a startup can exit right which happens to be the title of his new book, uh, which came out February 15th, 2022. And uh, he wrote that book with Mark Ackler, who's also from Math, Math Venture Partners. So uh, excited to have that book out and, and, and to read it. Uh, and excited to have him on the, on the cast today talking about it. So the book helps founders learn how to sell your companies, your startup. Um, it's actually, if you go to exitrightbook.com, you can learn more. We'll drop that in the show notes. You can grab a copy today. It's also available wherever books are sold. I think you find it on Amazon and other places as well. So as mentioned during our, uh, last few episodes, we're actually sharing most of our interviews from the, on the podcast in the next few months, um, that were part of our summit. So if you missed the summit, don't worry. Uh, a lot of these are going to be great conversations about, uh, different tips and strategies. Um, and so we really uh, hope you learned some things from this uh, great bit of knowledge that we were able to collect. Uh, before we jump in, though, I want to mention I am down in Austin, Texas. Yeehaw. It's uh, been a while. It's been a couple years since we were down here for South by Southwest. It's my thir- 13th time, 13 times, actually, I've been down here for this event and looking forward to it. Um, we're not hosting our big event that we have in the past. Uh, we did that for about a decade. I uh, decided to take a pause for a moment just due to the uh, rocky circumstances of the pandemic, and we hope to bring something uh, in the future. But uh, I am down here with uh, fellow Start of the Year team member, Eric Cast. He uh, leads up our community, and he'll be down here with me. So if you want to get a hold of us um, and you have something you want us to do or want to see us or meet us or something of that nature, or you have an event you want us to go to or um, something interesting or just want to grab coffee, do tweet at Frank Gruber or at Startup of the Year or Startup of Year. And uh, we'd love to hear from you, and uh, maybe we can sync up down here. And there's a lot going on, so it uh, should be a great week. And um, it will be interesting, though, also to see how it, how it compares to years past. I've been to some really big South by Southwest interactives, and I, I don't think it's going to be at that level, but maybe it'll be maybe it'll be interesting to be able to not feel that congestion. Uh, but obviously, uh, it's not about the uh, quantity, it's about the quality. So looking forward to seeing everyone down here. And um, one thing I did want to mention is, um, there are a lot of sessions, a lot, of, a lot of events, a lot of parties, lots of different things happening. There is a session I wanted to call out. It's happening on Saturday, March 12th uh, at 10 a.m. Eastern, or sorry, 10 a.m. Central. And it's geared to startups and investors. It's titled Startups and Government, Unlocking $4 billion in Funding. And it's a great group of individuals talking about uh, America's Seed Fund. Um, and so I think you should check it out if you're a startup or an investor. You might learn something interesting about Um, this different uh, kind of funding strategy that could be a part of your uh, repertoire. So check it out. Uh, We'll drop drop the uh, link to it in the show notes. You do need to be a badge holder to see it or or to attend. So this is kind of a call out to anybody that's at South by or going to South by that has a badge that's a startup or investor that wants to learn more about this $4 billion uh, fund, which is more or less the America Seed Fund. So check it out. Okay, now let's jump into that interview with Mert. So thanks for joining us. Um, I heard you wrote a book. I did. Yeah. In entrepreneur in residence at Math Venture Partners, and you recently sold a company and then decided to write a book about it. Yep. Tell us about that. How did that, ha- how did that all come about? I ran a company called SwipeSense for nearly a decade. Um, healthcare technology company. We basically did connected devices for the hospital. We measured things like hand hygiene compliance, nurse rounding, equipment management. Think of an indoor GPS for the hospital. We raised some venture capital went through the ups and downs, and eventually we had a happy ending. By the way, we exited the company in March of 2020. I was like running around with like an IV serum of like, this can't be happening to me. Like, COVID's happening, this deal's gonna fall through. It was like the most stressful period of my life. Managed to get it to the other side. And you know, an exit is an amazing thing. You end up 
you know, you end up with some financial freedom that you never had as an entrepreneur. It's, it's a dream come true. You scale your impact. So many founders don't get to that stage of seeing their company sort of find their permanent home. But I felt super shitty. Like, I felt like, man, like, left money on the table. We could have, like, gotten more. There were, like, terms that we agreed to that I was like, man, I wish we negotiated harder for it. So I was just, I was just frustrated. And a lot of the advice that we got in the process was basically hearsay. I mean, when you look for advice on selling your company, people connect you with other founders who've sold their company. Now, people generally don't like to talk about selling their companies. A, because, well, it's a great exit and people don't like to brag. B, there is not a good exit and you, you kind of want people to think that you've had like an amazing outcome. Uh, or there's like confidentiality. So you end up with this sort of like whispers of like, here's what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do. And this is like a life-changing moment. Like, I don't, I don't want this to be hearsay. Like, I want, I want to know what are best practices. So I sat down with Mark Ackler, my co-author, longtime mentor, Kellogg professor, partner at Math Venture Partners. And I sort of was like, I just was like, you know, I was bitching at him. I was like, man, could have done this, could have done that. And he, his advice was very practical. It was like, write this down. And this will be a useful framework for the acquiring company in the next time they're trying to buy a company. Maybe you can help make the process better because you can sort of share like how the process went for you, how it could be, how it could be better. Um, that sort of like, sit down on, let me write, just write this down, turn it into like a 10 page outline, you know? And it was like, okay, there's a lot here. Um, so we started talking to investment bankers, m and executives, serial entrepreneurs around, what do you wish you knew when you first started your journey, before you sold your first company? And out came so much wisdom, so many nuggets of information. And we tried to codify that with Exit Right. And it got me to this couch, so thanks. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So, and there's a framework for this book. I love, love framework. So walk, tell us what the framework is and walk us through that from a high level if you could. Fundamental question for an entrepreneur is who do you know is the right partner for you? You know, who are you going to sell to? How do you know? And this is, a, this, is, this is the question. It's not an easy thing to answer. So we tried to sort of create this checklist for founders around like, okay, how do you evaluate if an exit is right for you? And the framework is called FAIR. Everybody's looking for a fair deal, and fair stands for fit, alignment, integration, and rationale. Good exits have four of these elements. Fit is cultural fit. Can you sit next in an airplane with this person that you're about to join the journey with? I can tell you, if you're a super high-flying tech company and you're about to join like a super conservative, like 100-year-old company, maybe that's not a great fit culturally, because you're going to want to build stuff, you're going to want to pivot, they're going to be like, no, keep your margins in check, whatever. Like, it's just the start of a bad relationship. Cultural fit is super, super important. Second is alignment. Are you aligned internally with your board, with your stakeholders, with your investors? Is the buyer aligned internally with where you want to go as a company? And are you two sort of meeting in the middle around the direction of how we move forward? This is so overlooked. People just look at the price and go, oh my God, this is great, and let's move forward. It's so much more. And because there's so many stakeholders involved. Like, you're not making a decision. Your shareholders as a whole is making a decision, and so does the other side. Integration is essentially how you join forces. Again, another one of those things that sort of people just say, oh, we'll figure it out after the docs are signed. BS! Have a, figure out a way. How do these technologies come together? How are you going to serve your customers more? How are you actually practically going to start working together? This is one of those things that if you pre-plan can take like weeks and months, and if you don't, Three years pass, and you know you're you're about to finish your earnout, and like oh my god, our product is still not integrated. We're standalone, and it's just such a frustrating place to be as a founder. And then finally, and finally, is the rationale. Can you explain to your grandmother why this makes sense? Why these two companies need to come together? And we like to think of the rationale as less about here's how we make a bunch of money together. We think the rationale is best explained as here's how we best serve our customers more. And exit should be about the impact. It should be about the way how we deliver more value for our customers that we couldn't do otherwise. So if you have four of these elements, you're in for a great ride. Yes, you'll, you'll make money with it as well. That's the byproduct. But more importantly, you will have found the right home for your business. Oh, that's awesome. And so did you explain it to your grandma? I did. Yeah. Uh, she loved it, actually. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad. I'm glad. What do you think of those four elements? What do you think that you got the most wrong? That really was like where you were, had to, just had to go have a pitch session with, with Mark? <laughs> it's, an, it's an interesting question. I think I will pick alignment. Um, and I'll sort of like, I'll, I'll be, I'll open up more. This is being streamed live, but nobody's watching. Nobody's watching. <laughs> well, COVID happened. 
right? I mean, this, this you know, we run a healthcare technology company. And in, on, in, sanitiz in sanitizing. In hand hygiene. Yeah. <laughs> like, th this is all hands on deck, right? And the deal closed. We're sort of like, I mean, obviously we started working remotely and this and that, but immediately it was like, you know, DEF CON 5. Like our customers are in high alert. We have products and applications that can help this. And obviously I wanted to pivot and move fast as a builder. You know, I immediately went back to like, all right, we're early stage again. Let's experiment with a bunch of stuff. And, you know, that, for instance, led to our contact tracing application. Well, we have badges on everybody in the, in the hospital. We know who's in the room with what. That's kind of important if you're trying to do like systemic contact tracing. So I was like, go, 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 like ship it. Like, let's, let's move this on. They're like, wait, wait a minute. Like, that's not, you know, that's not hand hygiene. I'm like, who cares about it? it's not hand hygiene? Like, we gotta go, you know? That was something that I should have been a lot more explicit about. And again, this is easier said than done. Like I haven't sold 10 companies in the past. So I was in the mode of like, get this fucking deal done. Like no matter what happens, like skip that part, leave it to the other end. But now, sort of looking back, I wish I had sort of said like, okay, this big ambiguity is coming from, we need to have this like line item sort of opened up for this. We want to invest in a bunch of experiments. And you know, that sort of being part of a larger company, I don't think was sort of like immediately natural to me. So that, that would be my answer. Very interesting, yeah. And so then what was, you know, at what point do you, at what point would you advise startups to start thinking about exits? So. This is something that we have an unconventional thought on. Most people say right now, oh, you should not worry about your exit. Just build a great company. I think that's bullshit. I think you should start thinking about your exit the second you take an investor's money. Because the second you take an investor's money, you're taking on their agenda. Your investor isn't investing in you because you're their nephew from afar. You know, They're investing in you because they're expecting a return. Like, let's talk about this. You know, like, That's the reason why they're backing you. Now. I'm not suggesting that you should start spending your time talking to your buyers 24-7, kind of like how you would fundraise and, with your investors. That's not the case. Of course, you should build a great business. Of course, you should have freedom in your, in your sort of ahead of you to ultimately find, find the best home. But strategically, you should be thinking about how do I deliver more value with my customers? That should, should start immediately. And the conversation with your investors should happen regularly, not as a hey, I'm thinking about selling my company. That sort of is like an alarm flag of everybody's like, wait a minute, aren't 100%. you not motivated? Like, what's going on? Are you tired or whatever? No, 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 no. Let's put on the agenda every year an exit talk in our board meeting. Are we aligned? What, what is your like return profile looking like? Do you, are your LPs pressuring you to deliver returns? Like, are you on a timeline to sell? Are you going to pressure me to make some short-term decisions to sell faster? Because I want to keep going five years, six years more. Like that kind of, like even the basic question around, What's our threshold if somebody were to make us an offer that we would take right now? What is that price? How is that conversation not happening right now? It, it's just one of those taboo subjects. And it's the reason why we're all in the room. Like, why are we doing this shit? Why are we building the, these companies? Like, yeah, we want to get to that exit eventually. And it's one of those like hush hush areas. I want to sort of like remove the stigma around this. And I really advise companies to sort of like predetermine once a year agenda item on the board meeting exit talk. We're going to talk about these fundamental areas that we need to be aligned with as a board. And the outcome shouldn't be we're selling by the end of the year. The outcome should be where are you coming from? Where am I coming from? Are we healthily aligned here in terms of our long-term objectives? So that can't start early enough. And by the way, those exit conversations around the ecosystem of potential buyers Maybe they are strategic partners. Maybe they're distribution channels. They're ultimately there because they can deliver more value to your customers with you. And it doesn't hurt for you to start thinking about that sooner than later. And I'll tell you, I love that. I love the framing of that because as an early stage investor, it's, you know, when a founder starts talking to me about an exit at the pre-seed or the seed stage, like, no, 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 no. Okay, we're, we're not in the same business. <laughs> like, I definitely am in the exits business, but I'm in the exits business five to 10 years from now for way more than what you could sell it for in three years or five years. Totally. But and so, uh, but I really like that of like, let's, t let's, let's just put it on the table and let's talk about it. Let's look at it and talk about, talk about it. Um, that's, that is great advice. So, so we've talked a little bit about alignment, right? We've talked about, about integration. It sounds like you had some integration struggles there. Yeah, yeah. You know, let's talk about the fit. You know, what, um, you know, what advice would you give to, to founders out there? Is there maybe starting to have those conversations or thinking about having those conversations? How do they, you know, how do they know that they've got the fit? I think you Really, have it. really happens with a CEO to CEO conversation. And this, this is one of the advice that, uh, that I would love to share with all founders. Like this is something you should start doing. If you have a potential set of like 10 companies that you think one day may acquire you, you should be friends with their CEOs immediately. G give them value. 
Share them something that you've done in, in your marketing. Share them something that you've learned that you think can help them. Read their investor updates. Some of these are public companies. They tell you what they're going to do in the next five years. That's the business that they're in. Read that. Uh, say that, hey, maybe we can do something like this together. If you're a known entity, the fundamental thing that a buyer is interested in is trust. Can they trust you that you're going to deliver future value down the road for them? Can you take on their agenda with them? And, and trust is sort of a subset of this cultural fit. And you can start sort of creating that trust over a longer period of time. It's so much easier to do. Um, a lot of times you sort of like enter into this like dating phase. Like, oh, like we're selling a company, so let's shop this around to like seven, eight like companies. That sounds fake to me. Like that, that's not how you would do anything. Like that's not what you do in fundraising. Like a, a great fundraising looks like someone who's been mentoring you for a long time and they eventually decide that they're going to invest in you. This is what a good exit kind of looks like as well. You have a trusted relationship. You've been adding value to each other. I'm not saying share your customer list or your financial model with them. That's not the extent that you should go. But you should be a known entity. And there's no better way to do that by get, making yourself known to your competitors. Like, I'm a big believer in you should be friends with the CEOs of the companies that you're competing with. You're in the same business. Like, that shouldn't be stopped by, you know, the, oh, we're, we're, we're competing, therefore we can't talk to each other. So I think sort of you, you can smell cultural fit, essentially, from these conversations. And if it's not there, trust me, you will know right away that you're not going to get along with these people. So I, I think sooner than later, that, that's what I would advise in that as well. Great. Excellent. And so, Lynn, let's, let's shift gears and just talk about the, um, the stress that comes on mm -hmm. with, <laughs> with, uh, with an exit. Um, why is it stressful? And how do, you, how do you keep your sanity? I mean, people make the analogy to, to fundraising, and this is actually an area where the analogy breaks down. When you're fundraising... You're talking to hundreds of investors. I mean, you can fuck up a couple of those meetings. It's okay. Like, you know, hey, it didn't work out. Most people are going to say no anyway. Get a practice round. It's okay. Like, again, we're all founders in here. Not every fundraising meeting goes great. But that's okay. You learn from it. You iterate and make it better for the next one. Just like what you would do with your product, your service, your people, whatever it is. Exits are not like that. You don't get 10 passes at this. You get like two. You, you know? And the price of a mistake is really high. I mean, you're obviously thinking like, man, it's been like eight years, a lot of struggle. Again, the real ones know that you might show to the outside world everything is hunky-dory. It is not hunky-dory. You wake up thinking like, fuck, I got to do this again today. You go to bed thinking like not being able to sleep. I got to deal with this. Customers trying to not pay their invoice. You know, it's, it's struggle town. So that exit moment feels really great. You're like, oh man, this is the, this is the promised land ahead of us. We're going to get there. And like something goes wrong and people are like, pencils down. We, we got to resolve this. And like that, let me tell you something. There's stress and there's like, fuck, we're not selling this company now. Like that is another level of stress. Um, I personally felt that multiple times in my own exit. And it's just really tough. And the best thing that I can tell you is that you need to have a non-deal related brain trust of people who really love you and have your back. That can be just a sounding board for you where you talk openly about what you're dealing with, how you're being treated, how you're treating other people. Because you're going to have these moments where it feels like the whole world just shattered. Like, oh my God, this is falling apart. And that might feel like that. It's actually very unlikely that it's actually going to kill the deal. The person that's in your brain trust can tell you that. Because they can be a sort of like the sound, sounding board around like, hey, I just want the best for you. So for instance, Mark was that person for me. I mean, he's someone that I've known for many, many years. And I was able to sort of like openly talk to him about the struggles, the things that were going well, the things that weren't going well. That really reduces the emotional aspect of this and allow you to sort of act in a, in a logical manner. Because look, ultimately, this is about the rationale. And by the way, this is a, another like side here that I so get one of my pet peeves. Like when I talk to founders around like, hey, so how much do you think your company is going to be worth? They say something along the lines of, um, well, we have $10 million in revenue right now and companies in our space go for like 8x revenue. So it's $80 million. That is such a cop out you know, chicken shit answer, I can't even begin to tell you. Like, this is a horrible answer. Selling a company isn't about you. It's about what you can do to the acquiring company. So a much better answer would be, well, this company that we're potentially going to be acquired by already make a billion dollars selling X. We can make that 5% more efficient. Therefore, our company is at least worth that times three because they can make their money back in three years. Describe your company and the value in terms of what you can do for others, not, by your, not for yourself. That's, that's a selfish way of looking at this. So ultimately, this is an exercise in empathy. And if you sort of have the stressful moments, and maybe you sort of like, you, 
eye to eye and it becomes confrontational in this sort of m a conversation it's a great idea to sort of ground yourself in okay why are we here what, what is the impact that we're going to deliver together because no matter how much we disagree right now once it's said and done we're on the same side of the team so let's talk about how we're going to serve those people how we're going to serve our mutual customers how we're going to deliver more value together that sort of like even when you're not in the same team yet that really makes you feel like you're collaborating towards like building something together um, the cover of our book is a big Jenga sculpture. You know, it's this exercise where you're trying to like build something as tall as possible. It's very, very delicate, but ultimately you're there for the same purpose. And that rationale, that driving purpose is ultimately can be the best peacemaker that you can hope for if you find yourself in conflict and you're having those stressful moments as a founder. Love it. Yeah. So put yourself in the mind of your acquirer, what you can do for them. But ultimately you're both there for the same reason. Put yourself in the mind of the customer. How can you make your mutual customers better? So, um, uh, so then, you know, we had talked about the brain trust, right? And I just want to back up to that really sure. quick, right? Because was was Mark already was Math already an investor in Swipe? No. Oh, um, okay. So should you have investors in your brain trust? Well, maybe, maybe not. What's the we have an audience of entrepreneurs in here. You know as well as I do that not every one of your investors are created equal. They, the dollars are green, but some of them are kind of like not helpful. Some of them are actually super toxic that you kind of don't wish you talked to them. I mean, let's be real with each other. Um, but some of your investors, they might be the smallest check in your company, but you're like, my God, every time I'm looking forward to that conversation, I leave feeling invigorated, full of ideas and inspiration. I, I want to charge forward after I talk with this person. They got my back. They're not in it just to make a buck. That's the person you should talk to. Ultimately, this is one of my favorite things about, about math. Math is a fund built by operators. You know, Troy, Mark, Dana, they've all had leadership roles in startups and high growth environments. So they've walked the walk. I mean, we have some tech stars folks in the, in the audience right now, and you guys you know, know what I'm talking about in here. When Troy gives you feedback, it's not like I read it in this one time that you should do this. It's like, hey, that one time where I had to fire half my company, here's how I felt. Like, and, and that, that's a real experience. Now, I pitched math three times. As, as swipe sense got turned down three but I kept you know for for them it was never a mert this is not a no this is a not yet and I I believed in that and I sort of kept them in touch of like hey I would love your advice this is what I'm struggling with and they've been incredibly generous with their mentorship and guidance and part of the reason why I joined math in the in the first place I want to be what they were to me to other founders so I think it's sort of a it's the best version is to have someone that maybe is not an investor but is close to your journey but has relevant experience in terms of being part of exits, being part of boards that might have conflict. There's no better advice than someone who's been there before. Yeah, wonderful. Or read Exit Right. That's also a great source yeah, of well, advice. Well, obviously. Yeah, and that's actually a great segue because <laughs> <laughs> we, we want to plug the book because we want everybody here to go and get a, get a copy. It's pre-sale right now. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So tell us, where can we find the book? Go to ExitRightBook.com. Um, we are totally gamifying the Amazon rankings. So by the way, if you ever write a book one day, do what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> you don't want people to pre-order the book before it's launched. You want to get folks interest in buying the book and then you send them a nice note the week of the launch and you say hey can you please order the book right now this is now available so you crack the bestseller list you just keep it's so much advice you just can't help it i love it I'm telling you I guys that just <laughs> <laughs> so book advice exit advice you can obviously reach out to me anytime i'm happy to connect with any founder about about the exit about the lessons that we've learned maybe connect you with some of the folks that have helped us along the way as well so i'm always available as a resource personally we're all part of the uh the, the collective in here um, but if you're interested in ordering the book, go to ExitRightBook.com and you can pre-order your copy there. ExitRightBook.com. Wonderful. I'm looking forward to pre-registering for my copy and buying it on the day that it comes out. Thanks so much, Mert. It's so uh, great to hear these stories and really appreciated uh, you coming down to Tampa. So thank you for doing that. And uh, really, uh, hopefully everyone listening learned some things about how to exit right. Again, the book is out there. You can check it out. Uh, it's at ExitRightBook.com. And I uh, hope you, you pick up a copy and learn from that as well. And uh, I also wanted to mention again that the, uh, the live stream from the event, the Start to Your uh, Summit, it was out there. It's out there on our YouTube channel. If you want to check it out, you can see a lot of these different sessions. We also broke it out into, into individual sessions, so you can see all those videos as well. If you go to SOTY.link forward slash EST YouTube, again, it's SOTY.link forward slash EST YouTube. You can check out all that, uh, all these great sessions and learn, you know, learn some more from these and play them back and watch them again and, and share them with all of your friends and family. So 
Um, definitely check that out. It's a lot of great people that came together. All right, finally, uh, it's tax season. Yay! Or mm, depending upon which side of the fence you fall on. But either way, tax season is, is a time that uh, you got to get all your ducks in a row. And I wanted to, again, help spread the word about TaxTaker, one of our many companies in our community. TaxTaker helps tax, uh, tech founders across the country you know, get billions of dollars back from Uncle Sam every year by working with the startups that they work with. It's a pretty incredible uh, opportunity for you. So uh, there's these tax, uh, these research and development tax credits that are available to two tech startups that are developing products and technology. And you don't have to be profitable to qualify for them. So you can actually, um, you know, you don't actually need to know everything about them either because tax taker takes care of that for you. So Best bet for you to, to learn about this and potentially um, say, get some savings from it is go over to taxticker.com forward slash S-O-T-Y. Again, it's taxticker.com forward slash S-O-T-Y. It's free to sign up. They'll help you along and uh, potentially you could uh, save some money So, or um, via these tax credits. So check that out and uh, hopefully you do. All right. It's the end of the episode. Thanks, everybody, for listening. If you like the episode, please do share it. Please drop us a review. We appreciate the feedback. And remember, if you have a startup idea out there or you've got something percolating in your head, you want to get it going, today is the best day to start up and not tomorrow. Start it today. And we encourage you in doing so, join our community for access to support, expert advice, and the resources you need to elevate your startup by simply going to SOTY.link forward slash apply or just go to Startup of Year and find the application. Join our community today. And there's lots more to come. Until next time, I'm Frank Gruber, and we'll see you. We'll see you next time. I'm down in Austin, and uh, I'm sure I'll report back soon. Thanks again for listening. Thanks for listening to the Startup of the Year podcast. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll be back with another episode soon.